did you buy toilet water or is your contamination coming from somewhere else? Find out now. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a topic that's pretty sensitive in the mushroom growing world, which is contamination and where it comes from. So before we get started, if you want vetted high quality cultures, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi, link in the description below. Every mushroom farmer in existence has come across a time in their life where they have grown an unwanted organism where they expected mushrooms to be. So this is the general basis of contamination. Now everyone's gut instinct is to blame the provider of the culture, which is you know not unwarranted, but how do you know that you didn't bring in the contamination? So we'll go through that in this video and cover some of the most common contaminants, which could be trichoderma, penicillium mold, yeast from the ambient air, as well as normal flora, like a lactobacillus, for example. I'm going to break it down into different regions where you might encounter these various contaminants, symptoms of what might be happening at this stage and how you would prepare a sample to verify that contaminant under the microscope or in some cases you can use other methods um, but this is going to focus on microscopy. One example of when you might come across contaminants is in a spore syringe. So spore syringes should be relatively clear, um, maybe with some apparent spores that are floating in solution, but it shouldn't be discolored or it shouldn't have um, chunks of clear globular, which could be mycelium or other organisms present. So if you notice when you receive your spore syringe that it's discolored or um, it could have like a clear translucent, which looks like a cobweb in, inside, then that's an indication it's probably contaminated with a mold. The nature of making spore syringes means that it's probably in contact with a fruiting body. And oftentimes these are contaminated with uh, organisms from the environment. So uh, molds like penicillium or trichoderma could be present and then when they're introduced into solution, they're allowed a chance to flourish. Any bacteria that's in a spore syringe probably won't proliferate because it's just sterile water. So when you prepare these samples, just have that in mind. So normally I'll use a stain that is for detection of molds rather than like a heat fix stain or a gram stain for a spore syringe. So you can use uh, lactophenol cotton blue or other stains like that. And basically you'll put a drop onto a slide and let that dry. And then you can observe under about 10 X or 40 X. And ideally you should only see round shaped spores or various shapes that are consistent with the mushroom that you're expecting. If you happen to see larger shapes like Penicillium, for example, has a paintbrush-like structure, or trichoderma, which is going to appear as box-like structures and cells under the microscope compared to a spherical spore, then you've identified the culprit. So you're gonna have a hard time seeing bacteria, not saying that they'll be um, absent completely, but bacteria will be single cells. So that can be a cocci, which is a round cell, or a bacillus, which is a elongated cell. And those should be, you know, not present or in very small amounts in a spore syringe. Okay, so the next material that could potentially carry contaminants is a liquid culture. Now, the, uh, the beauty, but also the liability of a liquid culture is that it's very nutritious. 
So if there are yeast or bacteria, they're gonna flourish in this environment and they would be prolific compared to the mycelium if you received a contaminated culture. So it's gonna be much more obvious and I recommend using a gram stain to screen for any bacteria at this stage. So what you would do is take a drop of your culture and put it on a slide and let that slide dry, preferably on a heated surface like a stovetop, or if you have a heater for your sterilizers, that works well too. But basically you're fixating these cells to the glass slide to allow for your stains to work. Now what the staining is going to do is it will highlight organisms compared to other particulates or against mycelium, which could be very confusing in a thick, dense liquid culture. So you're gonna highlight any contaminants. So we'll go through the gram stain in another video, but this explains the process to prepare your sample. So ideally, you should not have any organisms present except for the mushrooms. But um, if there is any contaminations present, you're not completely lost because there's ways that you can bring that culture back from contamination. How do you know your contaminants aren't coming from your grain or your substrate? So both of these are vectors that can bring in contaminants. Um, one way to prevent that mitigation is to have dry substrate. So if your grain is dry, there's going to be a less of an, a biological load than if you received a moist grain. And same goes with bulk substrate. So I prefer to use pellets because they squeeze the moisture out and the process kind of mid minimizes any contaminants. So the way to prepare a sample of your substrate is I like to use um, a sterile bag. There's even filtered bags that you can use for this, but basically you'll fill your suspect substrate in a bag, um, add sterile water or broth, and then squeeze that liquid out. Then you would take a pipette, draw that liquid up and put it onto a slide and then you can treat that just like a liquid sample. So basically you're washing your solid substrate with a liquid, capturing any potential contaminants and putting it on the glass slide for observation. Now there's going to be a bunch of environmental inert bacteria. There is potentially going to be yeast and mold, which is why sterilization is so important in mushroom farming. So to minimize those organisms and allow for your mycelium to have the best um, chance for success and not have to compete against these other organisms, we sterilize our media. So to test it before and after or just after your sterilization is probably all you have to do. And then you should have no organisms present after it's been sterilized. Another easy way to verify this is just to leave your sterile product out for a few days and it should still remain sterile. So the final stage of the process where you can observe for contaminations in your system are in the fruiting phase. Up until this point, you should have a sterile process. There should not be any competitive organisms and your mycelium should be very healthy and able to fend off contaminants going into fruiting. But the chances that your fruiting room is sterile is very unlikely because of the high humid environment and the exposure to air. It's expected that there should be some kind of a biomass on your final product. I think that it's best practice to have this third party tested regularly or in accordance with your um, county or your municipality's regulations. But if you wanna go above and beyond, you can also test this yourself on your own farm. So once again, like the substrate, you can take a final mushroom, put it in a bag with water, and then squeeze out that moisture. And that way you can draw up the liquid 
and test it on a glass slide. And therefore, you will be able to stain it. So you, you can once again use a gram stain or a bunch of other stains that cover a lot of different organisms. And that way you can verify that you are sending out a clean and healthy final product. One of the most common contaminants that you could come across is trichoderma. So this is going to appear at most stages along the way. And it's just an everyday ambient mold that is present in our environment. It's very seasonal here, here in Colorado. When it rains a lot in the spring and the summer, trichoderma will emerge from the soil and it will be present. So you have to be extra vigilant during this time of the year and avoid any contaminated substrates as soon as you start to see a green tint to especially bulk substrate, which is vulnerable because of the volume, then you're going to want to discard that away from your farm and remove that contaminant. Another really common mold is penicillium, and it's kind of goes hand in hand with trichoderma. This can often appear during the liquid culture or expansion phase. It's very fast and fastidious grower. On agar, it will appear green with a white horizon. And oftentimes it has undulate colonies like little ripples. This is once again, just ambient to the air, but it likes the same environment as mushrooms. So it's going to compete all the time. Various yeasts are also present on our body and in the environment. Um, so they're kind of innocuous, but they will get into your liquid cultures and your grain cultures. And this could be a problem because it can change the pH it can overtake a culture very rapidly. And this will appear on auger as uh, small little round beige colonies. And then it will often give off a very distinct odor if it's contaminating your substrate. So then the final common thread of contamination is going to be normal flora. So bacteria from your skin like lactobacillus this can come in all shapes and sizes, but if you start to detect any funky odors in your bulk substrate, usually it's because of under sterilization or it comes into the system during your inoculation phase. So you, if you see any slimy substances or discoloration or you smell any unpleasant odors, this is usually because of normal flora and could be mitigated by doing extra precautions like washing your hands, wearing a beard net, or wearing a face mask to prevent your uh, organisms from your skin from entering the system. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that overview on contamination. There is so much more in-depth ways to detect it, but this is a very good overview of common contaminants in mushroom farming. If you're looking for pure, vetted, and procured cultures, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Check out all the reviews. And until next time, much love.